everybody, Chris here from Tiny Home Tours and the Off Grid Schoolie. Today's video features Amanda and Matt. They have a 1964 Clark Cortez RV. Just like my school bus behind me, this RV is completely made out of metal. It gave them a fantastic platform to start with. So if you are looking at sprinter vans, if you are looking at different options, I highly suggest looking into older rigs that are made out of metal. They'll give you a great platform to build on. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next week. Hi, I'm Amanda and this is Matt and we are The Van Project. And this is our home, Tesere. It's a 1964 Clark Cortez camper van. The guy that we bought this RV from had kind of passed the name along to us. And I think Tesere is like a female version of Cortez, like Tez for short, Tesere. Yeah. <laughs> so it came with the vehicle. And since the vehicle is older than we are, we felt like we had to kind of honor that and stick with it. Can't yeah. rename it. Yeah. It already had a name. <laughs> uh, having an older rig is definitely a challenge in some ways. Um, for instance, finding parts can be challenging. Luckily, this has a Chrysler Slant 6 engine, which is a super popular engine. If you know anything about car history in the US, they made millions of this engine so we actually been really fortunate it was only until just recently that we had a, a real challenge finding a part and that was a throw out bearing for our clutch which had to be rebuilt but we actually found an original one in the box and a great shop that was able to help us so uh, we really haven't had to do a, a terrible amount of maintenance to it i mean we know people with modern vehicles you know vehicles that are less than 10 years old who have had to do more work in the last couple of years than we have so we've been lucky so this is a motor home so it's a fully livable before we had it or when we bought it and this is the original bed and there were actually two bunk beds so there was a bench facing where kind of where i'm standing right here a bench facing this way that's the original layout and you could walk the whole the whole thing so in some ways that's a little nicer you don't have to climb over the bed to get to the back but we wanted a queen size bed we're living in this full time there's two of us we wanted to be able to have you know nice place to sleep hang out i do a lot of work in the bed too so that ends up serving lots of purposes yeah we work remotely from the road and we sometimes do in-person work as well we've run we've been doing brand ambassador work we did some for a kombucha company in san francisco this year we are brand ambassadors for leatherman as well and that's remote on the road so I'll show you some of our Leatherman tools later, or Matt can. He's the tool guy, so he should pull out a Leatherman tool later. So our kitchen, it actually was twice the size when we got it. So the kitchen went all the way back to basically where those jackets are, more or less a little before it, past the bookshelf. That was the kitchen, and there we just felt that that was not necessary. So we scrapped everything. We went all the way to the metal and redid insulation, we redid electrical, we redid everything. Yeah, so everything was in pretty good shape. There were some spots of rust that we fixed during the built, scrape it, converter, we put a rust converter on it, and then we would coat it with rust converter, sometimes paint if we needed it, or sometimes just insulation, depending on where it was. Like the main things that we kept in place are the front area where you're standing. This kitchen sink was already pre-installed and the plumbing was more or less right here. And then there's a toilet in the back that you can't 100% see, but we, we kept that. Everything else was pretty open as far as what we were going to do. And the first thing we built was, we started from the back and Matt and I kind of just built as we went. He drew some sketches, but mostly it was just kind of a build as we go and um, come up with ideas along the way, which is not really how a lot of people do it, but it worked really well. Yeah, we've had a few things that we'd changed now after living in it for 20 months, but it's pretty minimal considering and like the quality has been really good. We haven't had any major things fall off or break. It's been amazing. So this kitchen, we have a lot of storage for our food. We have like tea and coffee overhead here. This is like all of Matt's coffee stuff. My lots of tea things. We have like vitamins. And this is where we keep some, our toothbrush, our soaps, and these are kind of random kitchen things. Underneath, we also have a lot of room for pots, pans, plates, bowls, all of that stuff. And we do have a little tiny Nutribullet here that we use mostly for bulletproof coffees and teas and sometimes smoothies, but we don't have a freezer. So that does limit the smoothies. <laughs> so this was the one that I don't think is the original to the Cortez, but this is what came in it when we got it. So there was some updates that the previous owner did and he told us about some really important ones if you buy a Cortez, but this sink, I think that is one of the things that we'd probably change down the line. I don't love the two basins. I would one bigger one and maybe a tiny bit deeper if possible. And it is pretty close to the bed. So I think that's one thing to think about in your build is like it's it's a little close to the bed for me, maybe. So if you kind of wash it in the this basin close to the bed, you can get some splashing onto the bed. But usually that means that we just use the, the other basin and then use this for other stuff. And when we're driving, so since we just kind of got here not too long ago, we do keep this as a place for storage. There's thoughtful things you can do, like this fruit basket <laughs> has uh, kind of a no-slip 
thing installed on it but you know that's one of the main things of living on the road is you have to be able to secure everything when you move yeah this is a two burner propane stove that we chose and part of the decision here was that we can remove it so you can take it out and we have a five gallon propane that we take out with it if we want to cook outside most of the time in practice we have kept it in here and we cook in here so i don't necessarily regret it this is it's very high powered it cooks things really quickly it's it's been great it doesn't use very much propane so i do like it but i do think maybe for us our lifestyle we could have gone with something built in and maybe even an induction if, if we had wanted to so you have the view and the other thing that is kind of you can't 100 percent tell unless you look at it really closely is that this side the overhead cabinets don't come out as far as as by the kitchen they come out a little less far than the other side so that when you're cooking you have space so that was actually a decision that we made after we built out the cabinets on they're mostly for clothing storage and stuff and we decided if we came out symmetrically it wouldn't wouldn't be right so yeah this is the same this would be the how big it would have been then and you would have felt pretty different in a way but i like what we did here this was kind of all last minute with the open space that we had this overhead we said like let's have something open and it worked really well so i actually recommend that and we don't lose things out of here we have a small lip that tends to keep these from sliding when we're driving uh we have drawers drawers are useful um we have two they're kind of <laughs> silverware we have strainers big spoons all your utensils in here and then this one has spices mostly and a knife but spices knife and some of our bees wraps which is what we use most of the time instead of plastic wrap to wrap up our vegetables and fruits and keep them in the fridge so the propane is under the bed that might be controversial but we've never had a problem with it we do have our little carbon monoxide detector right here haven't ever had that go off so that's good news too right um the propane is under here in the corner you can't really 100 percent see it where you are but you can easily get it out and fill it up and then under here this is where our 30 gallon fresh water tank is so we fill that up with a hose outside 30 gallons is pretty good we did buy an external seven gallon tank mostly because when it's really cold out we don't use this we just use the seven gallon kind of as we need it that's a better solution for us we don't have a heater other than this little mr buddy heater here yeah we, we just don't risk it when we get we know we're getting closer to freezing we just try not to risk it if we if we can and um, we have a couple little hacks that we do one which we just ran out of water <laughs> so this is filled up as i hang up my hiking bladder here and use this <laughs> for the dishes kind of funny but this works really well actually you do the dishes right here yeah I use less water and it's it's kind of pressurized on its own a little bit gravity our fridge is over here that's an arb 50 quarts 50 quarts i think just fridge or freezer you can choose one or the other you set a temperature and it works well we usually can keep about a week or a week plus worth of food depending we eat a lot of fresh vegetables and fruits so that does take up most of the space and then condiments and like the rest <laughs> we've had no issues with it yet it's been great amazing we recommend it we have it uses up it does use i don't know about half of our storage capacity for solar which is like significant but that's that's one of the main things we got solar for so works for us there so a big reason that we made the decisions we did in our planning is we wanted to maximize the storage space and so like you'll see we have lots of overhead storage we have lots of under bed storage as well and that's a big reason why we went with a permanent bed instead of some sort of convertible bed we store tons of climbing gear camping gear we have like three tents in here it's pretty ridiculous so the amount of storage that we've been able to get by keeping this bed like this has been great that came about we did all the we did all the work ourselves so i don't know that i mentioned that but we did all the work in here ourselves from the carpentry you're seeing to the plumbing a lot of people ask us about these overhead like how we got the steel on here and this was an idea that came to us one time uh, i saw magnetic like mood board or something and i said that'd be kind of cool to include something that's magnetic in here that we can hang and remove photos or mementos or things and so that's where this came from because matt's a photographer we have a lot of photos along the way we keep, we have polaroids just like little pieces of artwork drawings paintings things we've done and so that's been great it's kind of a unique something that not that many people have done so i think that's been a really fun one yeah and it keep it, it breaks up the wood we love the look of the wood but it kind of breaks it up to have that other color and kind of that other texture in here it's tongue and this is so all of the wood that you're seeing most of it is pine there's this piece actually down the center here is redwood and that's mostly because that was the longest piece we could find we wanted to try to get like a really long length to not have to have cuts in the middle it's really easy to install it's it has 
pre-built tongue and groove sections and you kind of section it together. Mm -hmm. Installing it on this curve isn't the very easiest thing, but to get around that, we kind of started on one side and that's part of why we made this thing in the middle. This piece, this wood, there is a small tiny part in the middle underneath where they don't fully meet up. And this covers it and it also made the lights a little easier to install. So these lights just went into that. Yeah, we don't usually use as many lights at once. So we like that we have separate switches. You can turn them on and off <laughs> and then you can kind of set mood lighting. There's a couple upgrades I would do. One is a dimmer. Two is the center lights. These are on one, just on one switch and there's only a switch in the back. So we should have put one more towards the front and especially by the bed to have more dimmable lights. So that's been something we've kind of made a DIY solution for with this piece of paper that's over the light there. That's because reading in bed, even with these lights, they don't look very harsh right now, but it can be pretty harsh. But this is definitely plenty of light for us at night. And we have solar lanterns that we use sometimes too. So those are, they're inflatable. We sometimes use those because they just kind of have different settings and set a different light mood. On the charge. dash, then they just charge during the day or put them out if you're at a campsite, they charge up. And then at night they're like good for long enough that we're Usually we don't outlast them. Usually they outlast so, us. <laughs> so here we're, we're kind of past the living area of the RV, certainly still the living area, but this is, this is our bedroom or our bed. And Amanda and I built a queen size bed platform and we are really happy with that decision. The RV originally had a convertible twin size bed or it's like slightly even smaller than twin size. And it was innovative in uh, its design and especially for the age of this vehicle, innovative that they even built something like that at the time, but having to set the bed up every night, break it down in the daytime when we wanted to travel was really not ideal for us. And it was also not very comfortable because it's like 60 year old seats <laughs> basically that you're sleeping on. So instead we did a little bit of modification to the floor plan and we built a platform and put in this queen size bed, got ourselves a cheap memory foam mattress on Amazon, which has been actually really comfortable. I don't think you need to spend 1200 bucks, get yourself a cheap one. Um, and yeah, it's kind of cool. It's uh, perpendicular to the length of the vehicle and it's it's nice because we can flip our heads to either side depending on the you know if we're on a little bit of slant I'm really sensitive to having my head up or downhill so I like to always have my head uphill so you know we can put our heads at either end and that that works out great and then right over here at the foot of the bed we've got our bookshelf that we that we built in we've been happy with that too it's it's really nice to have a place where you can have all your books in a central location you can grab them easily if you want to just do some reading you know in the afternoon or the morning and um, you know we have some more lights back here over the bed as well so you can read at night we also designed some the the overhead storage comes as far back as over the bed and even past the bed but um, over the bed we we left a an open storage space which is really convenient for uh, we, we have art supplies we have some writing materials and stuff there and I think having things out in the open where you can see it makes you a little bit more likely to use it which we really like so sometimes you're lying in bed and you just glance up and you see your sketchbook and your your art materials and you can just grab them and do your thing uh, that's really handy and then next to the bed here we've built some some mounts for some of our camera gear I actually don't have our tripod on here at the moment but we've got our glide cam and uh, basically we're just trying to make the best use of a small space as we can so lashing stuff to the walls to big open spots on the wall is a good way that we've found to do that and we also have a coat hanger so we have a you know collection of jackets right here at the foot of the bed so we can easily hang them up and grab them if we need them to go outside. And then coming back behind the bed, we have the bathroom. So we actually have a functioning toilet in the RV, which is really nice. Uh, I think this has worked out great. It was already installed when we bought the RV. So we've, we've made use of it. In the future, it would be really nice to switch up to a composting toilet, something that's a little more environmentally friendly because you know, with this, we have a black water tank and you have to, add some stuff to keep it so it doesn't smell bad you have to go dump it so yeah we've, we've talked about maybe down the road doing a composting toilet instead but for now this is what we've got works really well it's got its own light switch back here we've got some storage back here as well you know some simple stuff stuff you have in your house towel rack a magnetic calendar back here whiteboard it's empty right now <laughs> it just says back to vegas so that that was before the new year but we'll use this to write down things that we're working on or or deadlines or travel plans and and it's nice because it's just mounts with these magnets so you can just easily pull it off the wall if you need to the bathroom has a a wet basin it, it was a wet bath so there used to be a wall here 
and a door and you basically stand or sit on the toilet and shower in there and that all drains the black water tank uh, we did sacrifice that uh, in favor of being able to fit the queen size bed in here so now we have an outdoor shower which we'll show you it's pretty cool but as far as not having rigid walls on the bathroom you know that's something you get used to or or you don't you sort of figure it out certainly when you're living with someone in a small space privacy has got a different definition so Amanda and I have learned to work with having a confined space so what we did was you know even though we removed the hard walls to the bathroom we uh, we did install a shower curtain so you can still have a little bit of privacy um, which is you know it's nice if if one of us is lying in bed and the other one has to use the restroom you just you know give yourself some privacy opposite the bathroom in the back we have some more storage Amanda mentioned this is kind of where we started our build actually it was like in this very corner is the first thing we kind of tackled and we just wanted to have lots of storage space like she mentioned so basically this is a whole bunch of stuff in here we've got tents we've got chairs we've got bungee cords backpacks Amanda's clothing is all back here that is one thing that we found kind of handy with living in a small space with your partner we kind of separate our clothing into two storage spaces and it makes it a lot easier to keep track of our own personal things and find them when we want to and then in this back bottom storage area we have shoes laundry and we also have all of the electrical stuff for our solar system so we've got our ac inverter we've got our charge controller we have a cell phone booster component mounted in there as well as some fuses so our solar system it's modest it's nothing crazy we have three 100 watt panels on the roof and we have 200 amp hours of lead acid batteries so that's about 100 amp hours of usable battery storage and that's really worked great for us it's enough to run our dc fridge charge all our devices run these led lights with a little bit extra left over, uh, especially when it's sunny. Even when it gets cloudy, we usually do okay for a few days. We, we usually have to modify our electricity use a little bit in those cases, but it's been holding up really well. I think 300 watts on the roof is a great amount. I might like to upgrade our battery storage a little bit. It would be nice to have maybe 250 to 300 amp hours storage because then we could start talking about switching over to like an induction cooktop instead of the propane and get away from the non-renewable stuff and be like really fully solar powered. That would be really cool to do. So that's like a long-term goal though. So far it's worked out pretty well. So that's the back of the RV and now we're gonna head outside and we'll show you some of the exterior stuff and uh, how it works. So we're outside the RV on the passenger side now and I'm just gonna point out uh, a few features. Right here we've got what used to be a propane compartment. So the RV used to have two 20 gallon propane tanks in here and we cut down our use of propane significantly from what it was originally designed for. So we repurposed this as a battery compartment for our solar batteries. So we've got two 100 amp hour AGM batteries in there and they're, they're strapped in pretty good. We've also got our fuses between our charge controller and AC inverter in there. And then we've also got some other utility stuff. We've got a bag of tools in here. We've got full set of sockets and wrenches, metric and US. We've got our jumper cables. We've got an impact driver. We've got all sorts of stuff to try and tackle repairs as much as we can when we're on the road by ourselves. So coming around the back of the RV now, we've got our rear door. So this is one of the other ways you can get in and out. It's really good at collecting dust too when you drive down dirt roads. And then we also have a full-size spare, which if you have a place to put one, it's really good to have a full-size spare. Can't drive very far on a donut on a vehicle that weighs 8,000 pounds, so full-size spares right there. And then coming around to the driver's side, we have our old shore power plug. Doesn't actually do anything anymore. We just don't need shore power. We were a little worried about that at first, but it's been two years now roughly and we're getting by just fine with solar. But we have our new shower spot. So this was originally part of the design of the RV. This is where the hot water heater used to go, but hot water heaters have gotten a lot smaller. And so we have uh, one of these Camp Lux on-demand hot water heaters, runs off of our propane. And this compartment is independent of the inside of the RV. So you've got an air intake down here, This burns propane, heats up, and then the exhaust comes out the top up there. And we have this great little shower wand right here. So when you want to catch a shower outside, you just flip this little valve in here to divert the water and uh, can take a hot shower. So that's pretty great. Exactly. So it's just, yeah, just cold comes in and then you control the flame and the water flow both from here. So when this 
valve is in the up position. Hot water comes out at the sink on the inside whenever you turn the water on. And then when you flip this down, you get the hot water right here at the lawn. So that system's worked pretty well. It does mean you're limited to showering more in places like this when you're kind of off the grid and you have some privacy or you can just be an exhibitionist and not care. It's really up to you. You know, sometimes it's really nice just to be able to wash your hair outside. That's something you can do without getting naked. So, and that can honestly make you feel very clean sometimes just washing your hair. So that's something we can pretty much always do and that's really nice. So now we're back inside the RV, but we're in the cockpit, I guess you could call it. Um, and this is a really fun and unique part of this vehicle because this is where you're like, you know it's a vintage vehicle. This is not what cars look like today. So <clears throat> driving this thing is, uh, I dare say, it's kind of like driving a school bus maybe. You've got this nice big wheel that's tilted up. It's got a really nice sounding horn. The Cortez is a four speed manual, so you do have to know how to drive manual to drive this thing. It's not too hard, but it takes a little getting used to because it, the gearing ratio is very low. So it has a lot of torque, can climb, it can go down pretty well, but it's not fast. It only goes about 55, 60 top speed. It has drum brakes, which is also exciting. You have to build pressure in the brakes, uh, sometimes pump the brake, especially if you're going down, you have to make sure you're using your engine compression to slow you down too. You can't just ride the brakes, they overheat. Made that mistake once or twice. <laughs> it's really scary when that happens. So uh, one other really cool thing about this, so or unique thing about this is uh, it's carbureted and it has a choke like a lawnmower or something to get it started. So this is the choke right here and you actually have to pull that out to change the fuel air ratio to get it to start when it's been cold for a while. As you can see, the original seat uh, is not treating me so well these days. Uh, this is my lumbar support right here. It's a uh, Ikea pillow. But this seat's actually pretty cool. And uh, you know, when the armrest works, it's nice. You've got an armrest. And, and also, believe it or not, uh, they had swivel seats all the way back in the 60s. So this seat will actually turn all the way around if you want it to when there's not a trash can behind it. So that's really cool. The vehicle overall, you know, it gets the gas mileage is great. I really can't complain. It gets 13 and a half miles a gallon. And for a vehicle that's over 50 years old, that's pretty incredible, especially a vehicle this size that has a gas engine too. It's got a Chrysler slant six engine, like I mentioned before. And those engines are just like, they're just workhorses. I mean, they do great. It's 155 horsepower or so, but it's over 200 pounds of torque. So it gets you where you need to go and it does that pretty economically as far as fuel is concerned. So up front here, if you look overhead, you'll see we have this storage shelf that we built in and this was not an area that was utilized in the original design of this RV. It was just a curved space headliner just right up to the front and no storage up here. So we built this in because we wanted to be able to have easily accessible things right up here that we could grab when we're sitting in the front seat. So we've got our you know substantial hat collection up here. Uh, we also have a massive first aid kit. We have vehicle registration forms up there. We've got our change for tolls and you know laundry and things like that, dog stuff. We have some USB outlets up there too so we can charge some USB light and phones and, and things like that up there as well. So yeah, that's been a really nice little feature. Usually it just, it tends to just get packed with stuff which you know is okay. Generally, if you know where stuff's at, it's that's how it is in living in an RV. Yeah, mostly just expected stuff, lots of oil changes, fluid changes, some stuff with the brakes, really minimal. I mean, it's made out of steel, so it's like very burly in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, the main problem is rust, which we do have some, but it's pretty good shape considering the age. We definitely have oh. to keep an eye on it. Yeah, I mean, because of the age, they didn't have all the chemical treatments for metals that they do nowadays. So uh, when we first bought this and kind of did our rehab on the inside before building it out, renovating it, we, we dealt with any of the major rust issues that we could find. The frame's all in good shape. It's more the roof, and that's a pretty common thing with most RVs. Roofs yeah. just take a lot of abuse. You know, the sun's on them all the time. Uh, and when it rains, water collects in little spots. We have this rain gutter that goes all the way around. So there's pinholes here and there. Yeah. Uh, so we've dealt with it as best we can. Since we're living in it full time, we're kind of holding off until we maybe like 
settle down for a little bit to do like a real full proper, you know, job of tackling all the rough spots. So yeah, I mean, we need to, you know, get out a grinder and a scraper and really get after it. It's a little bit of a bigger project than we're prepared for right now while we're living in it full time. So we'll get there. Okay. So if you want to find more about us, you can find us on Instagram at van.project and then on YouTube at the van project. And we're also on Facebook at the van project. And our website is www.thevanproject.com. You can also find it in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. This was really fun giving y'all a tour of our rig and uh, it was fun to show to you. The van life community and the mobile nomadic community in general means a lot to us. We really love the people we meet on the road. We love sharing this lifestyle with other people. So in addition to our marketing work that we do, we do event planning and some of those events happen to be van life gatherings. One of which is in Idaho this summer, the Teton Valley Van Life Gathering. This summer is going to be the second year it's happened and uh, we'd love to have you there if you think you're going to be in the area. Yep, so it's going to be June 14th through 16th and you can find out more information at uh, vanlife.com.au and we'll post a link below.